G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy Podcast. Today, our podcast, like much of our content, is brought to you by Manscaped.com. Manscaped are the world leaders in male grooming products and they've recently launched the Lawnmower 4.0 Body Hair Trimmer. As you can see, it's got a little light on it to illuminate your nuts as you're shaving them and it's got a 90 minute battery runtime, so you can watch- Is that some skin safe technology I see there? It is, it's ceramic bladed so that you don't cut your nuts as you're shaving and you can do it for up to 90 minutes, so that's like two and a half quarters of a final this final series. What else does Manscaped have in their performance package this season? Well, if you'd like to stay fresh, you can use their reviving crop mop ball wipes. Mm. If you'd like a clean start, you can use their crop cleanser ball cleaner and body wash. I could go for some of that right now. If you're into foot stuff, you can use their foot dusting foot deodorant to make that area smell a bit more pleasant if the smell isn't part of your kink. We're trying very hard to drown out the dog. And after you've done all that and you need a finishing touch, use their refined cologne by Manscaped. This Father's Day, if you're looking for a great gift from your dad, you can get 20% off that product and free shipping by going to manscaped.com and using our exclusive code TRUEFOOTY20, all caps, all one word. You get a great discount, free shipping, and you'd be supporting the channel. Bloody earth. Let's get into the video. But no, that's right. I big ol' left. Okay, speaking of big ol's, let's talk about Fremantle, oh. uh, who finished 11th on the ladder and a record of 10 wins and 12 losses and a percentage of 86.5%. I'll let you take this away. Oh, I'm going to need a painkiller for oh, this God, one. All right, so um, I'll talk you through while you're huffing down and that. Um, they improved by three wins this year, and they won a derby. So uh, if you'd offered any Fremantle fan that at the start of the year, they would have jumped at that. Is that how you feel? Uh, there was a lot of people that fought finals. I personally wasn't one of them. I sort of thought pretty much what happened this year would happen. Mm. It still is kind of a bit like... You're kind of still a bit dejected about it at this point, mm. but... That is improvement. We are looking in the right direction. Like you can't be like pissed off at the direction the club's going. Like mm. it, they're doing the right thing. It's improving. There's a clear improvement this year. Yeah, yeah. They, they were on the back end of the finals race. That was very weak this year, though. Mm. To to flip. Yeah, it, it was going to be a Brad. Point. It was always going to be a Stephen Bradbury if we made it. Yeah, yeah. The the teams that like seventh and eighth were clearly much worse than sixth. Mm. The fact that West Coast, St Kilda um, in particular, and even Richmond were still a chance to play finals in the, couple, in the last fortnight is an indictment on the competition. <laughs> oh, in Fremantle's case, they are the youngest and probably most promising group yeah. team in that group. So that, that's not a negative. Where were the group that on the upward end of our trajectory, the rest of the group where we're in was at the absolute bottom end of their sort of... Projections, yeah, perhaps. Sort of yeah, yeah. Although some of those teams, I still think, could sort their shit out. But yeah. Uh, in terms of individuals, Andrew Brayshaw went took huge steps. Looks like he could be in all Australian as early as next year. Sean Darcy's probably the, fridge, one of the better yes. young uh, rucks in the game. David Mundy, uh, the way his season. Yeah, absolutely. Caleb Sarong was huge. Mm. Ross Glendinning Allen, medalist. Back half of the year, that where they sort of started letting Sarong loose a bit more. That mm. was good. Like even though the tagging probably was valuable experience for him. Ultimately, mm. you got to let him loose. Yeah, he's, he's an, an absolute, absolute pig gun. of a man. He's a pig of a man. Yeah, yeah, he's. Uh, he racks that ball up. Yeah, he's a bit of a little shit, and I mean that in the best possible yeah. way. Like, uh, I really, really like Caleb Sarong. Finally, a key forward prospect. How do you feel about Josh Tracy? I've I like what I've seen. Like, it'll take time. Like, he's a kid you've taken in the rookie draft. Like, you could even say the same thing about Tabner and look how long he's taken to look like a half competent AFL player. <laughs> <laughs> Which, to his credit, he's gotten there like the past couple of years he's actually looked good old tabs mm -hmm. i was as a little quick aside i was listening to him on the podcast with buddy mundy and Logue the other day and i was just sitting there going no wonder i bag this guy so much he's literally me <laughs> <laughs> just like no literally he's hateable <laughs> no like literally just like that sort of like just random goofy like they literally like he was copping shit for not tying something down the roof of cars like I've literally cop shit for the exact same. Have you? <laughs> what do you mean? You, you got in a car and drove off without tying something down? Like, I thought I tied this big... Because <laughs> mate, Hush, bought this big chair and I thought I tied it down. We're going down the freeway back from, like, Waruna and it's like, we just hear the chair start flapping. <laughs> Tabana was telling a very similar story, but it was a kayak he didn't tie down. Yeah, right. But we both also denied our involvement because it was sort of like other people were sort of involved as well. Mm, mm. But yeah, like, he sort of seems like have that sort of similar personality. So it's like... It's really self-hatred here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, back to Fremantle. A couple of role players... Tabner uh, is Fremantle. What are you talking about? Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I, a couple of role players emerged this year. Schultz and Switkowski, I think, are two players that um, a lot of Fremantle fans really like. When aid fucking Schultz re-signed fucking yesterday. He's is he still, not re-signed? Yeah, there's still whispers of Hawthorne fucking trying to get him. Is he Is he West Australian or Victorian? Vic. Ooh. But he's Vic, like, country. He's, like, yeah. a good... That's a bit stinky. I didn't realise yeah. he was still out of contract. Yeah. Is he on the rookie list still? Not too sure. I think he's senior, but... Okay. Yeah. Well, that is something to watch. Mm. That would be a massive. If we blow. lose him, I'll piss me off more than Chera. The morale side of things, as much as anything, mm. as well for a player that's. I think if he's, a real and he's live very well liked and he's a big moment player a yeah. little bit for a guy that yeah isn't taken early in the draft or anything like that. He's yeah. decent, yeah. And he's very well liked in the club. Yeah. What negatives come to mind for you for Fremantle if you had to pick some? Inconsistency, like yep, because we've had the highs, but then we've also had some crushing lows. <laughs> just some abysmal games where I've just been like. Why the fuck do I bother with football? Were you really dejected in round 23 against St Kilda? A lot of uh, Dockers fans, sorry, have been very negative on that performance. I've missed most of it, luckily, because I was out having birthday oh, lunch, yeah, fortunately. True. true, that is a good one to miss, yeah. Yeah, I was glad I missed that one for my birthday. But yeah, like the like more the past six, eight weeks, like they've been like almost bad for my mental health at times. <laughs> just like... Just like the fluctuations of how negative and how positive they sort of make it right, feel. It's just yeah. like too it much of a roller coaster sometimes. Pretty consistent with a young team, though. Mm. So, but twenty five years, like it's yeah, but not just this iteration. It's just like the same shit for twenty five fucking years. Yeah, I know. You can't take it out of context, though. You just got to assess it on this group of players, which have been a five to six year rebuild, mm. and this is the best version that we've ever seen of them. Yeah, yeah. And some of your best players are your kids. Already, so yeah. uh, injuries in general, I think, is still injuries negative. Were bad, you yeah. really need to get a hold of it. You sacked was it Weber? Weber, Weber yeah. yeah. Um, and then the injuries continued. <laughs> yeah. So um, Fife in particular didn't escape injury this year. Lob missed most or oh, half the year or something like that, yeah. right? Uh, but just generally speaking, yeah, everyone was out for patches. Yeah. If I had to pick up on something as well for Fremantle, it would just be a bit of forward potency, potency, mm. particular accuracy in front of goal. Yeah. Um, that really. Killed momentum at times. Yeah, they year, couldn't so. hit water if they fell over a boat sometimes. Yeah. Uh, the draft selections are 8, 27, and 81. So not much of a draft haul, haul, uh, haul this year as such, but they will probably be trading Adam Chera we'll maybe to come. So there's, yeah, there's room for that to grow. What what do you want to do this offseason? Get like a couple of good local kids or if there's like a standout. I'm talking about football. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> like someone that's just like... We can see them sort of filling a role for us. Like, if there's like a WA kid that's like plays a role where we've got access, maybe not. But mm-hmm. if there's any like slight deviation between the WA kid and someone else, sort of go to the local kid. I sort of feel at this point, like, because we've sort of taken, a, we've got enough of those top end. Maybe unless there's like a top end key forward or back mm. that we can take a flyer on beyond that. If it's like a mid or whatever, and there's a slight difference in talent, take the local safer kid. Yeah. Even if they have a bit less star factor, I think at this point. Yeah. We've taken enough of those guys with star factor, mm. like your Sarongs and Brayshaws. Yeah. They can be the A graders. We need those sort of good B graders that'll be there for 10, 15 years and yeah. be a part of it for long. Like your Isaac Smith type of dudes for Hawthorne. He wasn't necessarily like a top guy for those Hawthorne teams in their peak, but mm. he was a pivotal guy for that whole stretch. Like we didn't need those type of guys, and I think. We have a much better chance of getting them from WA yeah, or Vic Country. Okay. Yeah, right. It's it's a shame that you have to start thinking like that. Just mm. recruit, change your recruiting based on where the, pl- the players are mm. from. But I I do get it. Um, overall grade, probably B, C plus. Yeah, I went I went B. I think yeah. just incremental improvement. Yeah, won a derby. Mm. Yeah, that was a thank fuck. We finally won a bloody derby. <laughs> 